Good morning, everybody. So I had a comment that was left on one of my previous videos requesting that I do a segment on what you should pay for different types of RV classes. And I thought that this would be a really good segment to make simply because I think for a lot of folks who are just getting in to RVing and looking at travel trailers and fifth wheels, one of the most confusing aspects is figuring out how much you should pay. Mainly because you can go to your dealership down the street and they can have a $65,000 fifth wheel that they're selling for $60,000, swearing to you it's a great deal. So I wanted to make this video because I think there really needs to be a video that explains really an approximation of what you should expect to pay for a new RV. And I'm going to make this specific one about travel trailers and fifth wheels, since they're by far the vast majority of RVs that are being purchased. A lot of this will hold true to your class A, B, and C motorhomes as well, but for the sake of the video, let's stick to travel trailers and fifth wheels. Now, the first thing that you have to realize and you have to keep in mind is that there are incredibly high margins on RVs, specifically travel trailers and fifth wheels. The price that you see as an MSRP or the retail suggested price is going to be astronomically higher than what you should expect to actually pay for it. Now, that holds true 95% of the time. There are a few one-off brands or custom builders such as Augusta and even some other ones like Horizon that don't offer those same discounts because they ship factory direct. You're paying the factory to build it for you. So even though there may be incentives and discounts towards getting one of those, they're generally not gonna be as vast as you might see at your local RV dealership when you're buying a Forest River, a Heartland, or a Jayco product. Now, the first thing you'll find out when you start researching the price of RVs is that, especially online, when you see a price and it says MSRP, you're generally gonna see a line going through it, and it's gonna say call for best deal or call for nation's best pricing. You'll see things like that. And the reality behind that is there is so much wiggle room on that price that oftentimes they're gonna to try to provide you with a price that sounds like it's a really good discount, but at the end of the day, probably isn't nearly as much of a discount as you could get if you shop around. There are some local dealerships around me that sell an $85,000 Bighorn fifth wheel made by Heartland, and they'll have a sticker price on it of $85,000, but then they'll have a line going through it, and underneath it, it'll say $78,000. And you're thinking, wow, they're discounting it a good amount, and this is a good deal. But the reality is, you can look online, or you can look at other dealerships, maybe even in the same area, who may discount that exact same fifth wheel $20,000, $25,000, even $30,000. So you can get an $85,000 fifth wheel for $65,000 or $60,000. One thing you want to keep in mind is a lot of times the dealership will sell you on their service. They'll say, you know what, if you buy from us, you're going to get preferential treatment. You're going to be able to get in the service department quicker. A lot of those little things that they'll basically try to say that if you pay an extra $10,000 for our RV, you're going to have a better experience overall. And in some cases, that may be true. I mean, if they build in $10,000 worth of service costs into the price of the RV, then you know they better take better care of you. But the reality behind it is, when you don't shop around when it comes to RVs, and you don't look to see if there's another place you can save a significant amount of money on that specific travel trailer or fifth wheel, you're taking the risk that you're gonna be grossly upside down on that RV, or you're just gonna be paying way too much every month or even up front. Most people finance RVs. I know a lot of folks you know, live by that creed. If you don't have the cash in your pocket, then you can't afford it, and that's true. But most people tend to finance their RVs. And unfortunately, a lot of the financing engines to get into an RV are going to extend the length of that loan out 10 to 15 to 20 years in some cases. They'll treat it like it's a residence. So if you end up paying 
$10,000 or $15,000 more for your travel trailer or fifth wheel than the next person, the reality behind the trade-in value or the resale value of that RV is that most of that's based on the lowest possible price that that specific RV can be sold for. So let me give you an example. That $85,000 Heartland, if one dealership is selling it for $80,000 or $79,995 and another dealership is selling it for $60,000, then which one do you think is going to be the published price when it comes to comparing for trade-in value or resale or residual value on that specific RV? Of course, it's going to be more comparable to the lower price. So your depreciation is generally going to start at the very lowest price that that travel trailer could have sold for. There are websites that you can go to that will give you the dealer cost of some of these travel trailers and fifth wheels. And what you'll find out really quickly is that your trade-in value is generally going to be about 20 to 30% below what the dealer cost is. So on an $85,000 fifth wheel, if dealer cost on that is $50,000, they're marking it up to $60,000 at wholesale pricing. And another dealership selling it for $80,000, when you go to trade it in and they're looking at how much depreciated value that trailer or fifth wheel has, they're taking it off of that $50,000 dealer cost. So you may find yourself in a travel trailer or fifth wheel that you just bought or that you bought a year or two ago and you're ready to upgrade to something larger. If you didn't negotiate for the very lowest price on that fifth wheel or travel trailer that you could have gotten, then the gap between what the actual value for trade-in or resale of your trailer is versus what you owe on it is going to be astronomical. It's going to be huge. You could find yourself you know, being $30,000 upside down simply because you didn't try to find a better deal on your travel trailer fifth wheel. Now, another point I would like to make is that there are some costs that some dealerships can bundle into the price and absorb, as well as some costs that some dealerships don't really do that with, that they try to essentially add to the price after everything's said and done. And what I mean is, the main one being freight. So some dealerships will say freight not included in the price, and you don't really know what that means. Well, freight is the fee that the transportation company that delivered that dealership, the RV from the manufacturer, charges that dealership. So if I am picking up a fifth wheel as a transport company from Goshton, and I'm transporting it down to Dallas, Texas, or I'm transporting it to Miami, the fee that I charge, whether it's $2,500, $3,000, $3,500 to that dealership can sometimes be added on to the price of the RV either at the beginning of the sale or the end of the sale. And what I mean by that is some dealerships will go ahead and include that into the overall price of the RV. So a dealership that's selling an $85,000 fifth wheel for $60,000 may say no freight included and they're bundling that into the $60,000 total price. But another dealership might say $60,000 for the RV plus $3,500 freight. Most times I've found personally that the dealerships who charge freight are also generally marking their fifth wheels up. You would think that the dealership would say, well, then we'll sell it for $57,000 and say there's $3,000 in freight and equal that same $60,000 price tag as another dealership that bundles it in. But that's usually not the case. What generally tends to happen is dealerships that charge freight tend to charge more for the fifth wheel up front as well. They're usually going to charge sixty-five dollars or $70,000 for that same $85,000 fifth wheel, but then they're going to say freight not included. You get over there and you find out that they're tacking $3,000 onto the price simply to cover the cost of having it delivered to them. And I understand that dealerships need to cover that cost of freight, but at the same time for them not to include that in the posted price of that RV is kind of misleading because you look online, you say, wow, this RV is selling for $60,000. It's the same price as another dealership. Then you get there and you find out that they say, okay, well, it's $60,000 plus $500 for make ready or dealer prep plus $3,000 for freight. 
and taxes and all the other fees associated with getting into an RV. So you end up finding out you have to pay $7,000 on top of the price that they advertised it for versus another dealership that just bundles it in, even if it's slightly more expensive, but at least lets you know that freight is bundled into the price and that you don't have to pay that as an extra fee. That's essentially a hidden charge when you get there. So the main thing I want you to keep in mind is that when you're looking for a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, you want to make sure that whatever price you're actually going to pay is generally going to be between 20 to 27 to 30 percent less than whatever MSRP is for that specific trailer. And that holds true pretty much across all of the main lines that you run across. You can find a $30,000 MSRP on a travel trailer and really you should expect to pay about $20,000 for that trailer. You can find a $100,000 fifth wheel with an MSRP of $100,000 and really you should expect to pay closer to maybe $70,000, $75,000 for that fifth wheel. So you just want to understand that the prices that you're going to pay for a fifth wheel and that you should look for in your budget should be much more in line with the price you expect to walk out with versus the MSRP. To clarify that, if you set a budget of $60,000 and that's what you want to spend for a fifth wheel, then you should really look at fifth wheels with MSRPs of in the eighty-five dollars to $90,000 range. For instance, a nice Palomino Columbus 377 mid-bunk unit has a MSRP of about $80,000. In some cases, it can go up to about $90,000, depending on how it's configured. But most dealerships are actually going to sell those units for between $52,000 and $60,000. Some of them will go up to $65,000. If you find a dealership selling that specific fifth wheel for anything really above that, then they're overcharging or their margins aren't great enough because they don't sell enough of them or they're just trying to find a way to bundle other stuff in and in reality you should really find the lowest possible price you can get into there's a saying that a lot of people think a good deal is whatever you're willing to pay for something and that takes negotiations and things like that into account so if you think man i'm getting a really good deal on this that's your perception of a good deal the dealership may not have that same perception. The dealership may look at you and go, I'm making a killing off of this. He thinks he's getting a good deal and it's a win-win for everybody. Well, it's a win-win for everybody until you have to make a payment that's much higher than what it should be, or it's taking more out of your fixed income than it should, or you need to trade it in, or you need to sell it because you've lost your income, or because you're running into hard times, or because it's just time to upgrade to a different unit and you find out that you're so much more underwater on that unit than you ever thought you would be, simply because you thought a good deal was paying a certain price because you didn't do a lot of research and you found that you paid way too much for that RV. So I want you to go by that typical calculator of 30%, anywhere from 20 to 30% really, and that's what you should be paying below MSRP on virtually any type of recreational vehicle. If you stick to that, you at least know that if you're not in that range and if the price seems a little bit too high, that you should shop around, that you should look at other places just to make sure you're not paying too much. Again, there are custom units out there that are going to cost more. There are custom units that don't offer those types of discounts because they may build them in at the very beginning of the sale since they're building you a custom unit. But the vast majority of RVs sold have an MSRP that is grossly higher than what that unit should actually sell for. So just keep that in mind. Anyways guys, I hope this has been an informative video. If it has, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.